is part of our research project shared with Fundación Pro Buenos Aires and Museum Park of Puebla, Mexico, and is researching the history and contemporary relevance of the legend of El Dorado in the way that we think of ourselves here in the Latin America and in the Americas in general, the whole hemisphere. The myth of El Dorado took many forms during the early colonial period and it was a history that talked about this golden kingdom where gold was all over the place. This fueled the explorations and the greed of many of the early explorers and, and conquerors of the Americas and many of the explorations and invasions that we see throughout history in the continent. But, you know, there was a real El Dorado, we don't know. We really did not, but the closest to a real El Dorado was the history of a golden king in the Muisca people that is believed to be confirmed by the pump of a raft that is now presented in uh, Museo de Oro in Colombia. This myth talked about a golden king that covered himself in gold uh, in a ritual of power investiture and that would be thrown into the lake and submerge himself and a lot of gold offerings to the gods. And this was recreated by artist Pedro Terán in 1981 to discuss the history of Colombia's nation in a piece called Nubes para Colombia, Clouds for Colombia. I loved working on the show, and I think it was for all of us, the curators, a great adventure because the work is so fascinating and it's also so varied. There are, in this exhibition, conversations going on between contemporary artists and ancient artists and colonial artists, and it is not chronological, but it is conceptual. Everyone can understand it. You come to the gallery and you're surrounded by fantastic works of art and you make up your own myths of gold and you make up your own chronology. And uh, I just love these conversations. Let me just point out two works, other works in this room uh, that are very close to my heart because they're artists, they're artists who I know one is passed away, one is still living. Uh, Ana Mercedes Hoyos, they're both from Colombia. Ana Mercedes, uh, who was best known for her work as a pop artist. Here she's doing something very different. She's doing an image uh, in a circular piece on linen of Lake Guatavita. And Lake Guatavita, which is not too far from Bogota, is the place where the mythical gold king threw himself into this literal pit of gold. Uh, and she paints it not in gold, but in granite. It looks like a pit of mud. So it's an ironic commentary, I think, on the legend and the reality. And just facing it on the other side of the room is a work, a quite extraordinary work by Olga de Amaral, uh, who is Colombian, who lives in uh, Bogota, and works with thread and works with cloth. And in this piece of hundreds of components, uh, she uses a similar uh, circular form, as does uh, her friend, uh, in the other picture that I just talked about uh, on Mercedes. And it reminds me that all of the show is made up of these types of visual interfaces and conversations. So one of the conversations that we are trying to open in this show is this dialogue between past and present. And in this show, you are going to find words from the East pre-Spanish to the contemporary era. One example is this mask from the Lambayaki. It's a funerary mask, all made of gold, as we see now. But originally, it was painted in red and other pigments and also uh, ornamented with feathers and other uh, stones. So this means that even though they valued gold as a material and they related gold to, to different forms of divinity, like, like the sun and also the moon because of their shiny quality, uh, they didn't value gold as this, in the same way that the Europeans did when they arrived in the Americas. In this room, 
we are highlighting one of the central axes of this exhibition, which is uh, how El Dorado influenced territory map making, how the Americas were conceived, how the Americas were designed, and they were uh, uh, names were created around El Dorado and territories and and places, etc., all around this uh, this search for this golden land. different examples of maps from the colonial to the contemporary period, again, all juxtaposed, trying to uh, explore a connection between the present and the past. And on the opposite wall, we have another major topic of the show, which is the, uh, the collection of Odorado and Bodies. In the middle of the room, this is the central piece of the room, is this installation by uh, Ecuadorian American artist uh, Ronnie Quevedo, who is drawing from his personal uh, history, you know, from his family history of his mom being a seamstress. Uh, and he is collecting uh, the mapping of the body in the way that we make clothes. Uh, and, and the body itself, so we felt that it was appropriate to put this in the middle to bridge this connection between territory and border. A very important object of this exhibition are created by Theodore de Brie. Theodore de Brie created a series of prints in 1599 that depicted or was inspired by because he was never in the Americas by the trips of Sir Walter Robb, an Anglo-Saxon explorer that arrived to, you know, under a mission of the British Empire to explore what is today Trinidad, Venezuela, and Colombia. He was in the search of El Dorado. This print is titled The Origin of the Legend of El Dorado. And what we see here is this depiction of bodies, the way in which the indigenous people were represented, codified, and stereotyped in this European and use in the special culture of Europe that circulated through engravings, and it was probably one of the most important uh, ways in which images circulated throughout the period. And then we process into the third room, which I think is like the uh, the cataclysmic. Uh, explosion of gold. And you have here, I just want to talk about two artists who I particularly am drawn to, and this is the Brazilian artist Leda Gatunda, and she has created a map. This is a mythical map, a mystical map, a map of mystery, and you can look at it all day. It's the, lab, the map of the lake, Lake Guadalita, and the map of El Dorado, because it's a map that suggests a place, a no place, and it suggests the draw, the pull of mythology. And it's all that it has clouds and it has uh, particular indicators of place, but it is really the place of the mind. And then we go to an earlier artist who was a German-born artist who worked in Mexico, uh, whose name was Matthias Geritz, who was a sculptor and an architect. And uh, two of the pieces we have in the exhibition uh, one reminds us, these were done in the 1940s, one reminds us of the gold that's used in religious painting in the Weissrigel era. You might think of going into a, a cathedral or a church in Oro Preto of Brazil or in Puebla in Mexico and see these extraordinary uh, paintings done of gold of the Virgin Mary or Christ. And he secularizes it and focuses on the gold itself. Whereas in this piece, also by Geritz, he's equating the perfection of gold to the perfection of geometry, and it also reflects his fascination and his professional interest in architecture. We centered this wall with the work of Denison Banyuma, who is a Brazilian artist of indigenous descent from the Banyuma people. And in this work, he is uh, juxtaposing an overview of the Amazon with um, a deforested area on the shape of the silhouette body that looks like one of those uh, crime scenes. 
by suggesting that perhaps a, a, a crime, like an environmental crime uh, and a humanitarian crime uh, has been happening throughout the centuries in the search for gold. Uh, and then uh, surrounding this, we have the leaves of another Brazilian artist, uh, Laura Vinci, in which uh, these are all uh, golden leaves that also suggests that perhaps uh, this nature itself is something that we should value as much as we value gold uh, in contemporary society. We hope that this exhibition is not wrapped in history or close to the intervention of what El Dorado is possible that but we also have many dialogues, many questions about what El Dorado, El Dorado was and what El Dorado can be. And we hope that you can come see it. The show has more than 40 contemporary artists and more than 60 artists, including the historical ones. And it's organized in two parts. The part one, which is the one that you're seeing in this tour, is opening September 6th. And it's going to have a meeting for you until December 18th, also the different three. Our show is going to open in January and close in May of 2024. So please come see it in the meantime. I keep thinking about it.